Hey, fellow babies, welcome back to Factor Factor on Sifted.net. Um, to our Patreon patrons and YouTube subscribers, thank you very much. Um, that is keeping Shane uh, in enough cash to produce this show. None of it's going to me, so don't feel bad. You are supporting the site so that Shane can produce all sorts of content, and we do appreciate it. Um, if you have done those two things or not, still remember to link your Twitch Prime account to your Amazon Prime account. Amazon will pay us if you do that. Remember, you've got to re-up that every month or so. So if you're watching this and haven't done it in a while, please re-up that link, Twitch to Amazon Prime. This episode of Pactor Factor is brought to you by DeShazer Ryan Realty. Right now, Doug DeShazer has beautiful lots available adjacent to Cucanusa Lake in Northwest Montana. Pull up your RV and access the hookups or build your own construction. Either way, you have access to world-class fishing, hunting, boating, swimming, biking, hiking, and the internet. No matter where you're looking to buy, make Doug DeShazer your real estate consultant at 406-291-1643. That's Doug DeShazer at 406-291-1643. Today's question from Sifted from Toast9. Baldur's Gate 3 is a huge success, but it's been delayed on Xbox Series X due to the requirement of it's running on Xbox Series S. And I gotta say, I didn't realize they were that different until this. Microsoft just agreed to remove co-op play from the Series S version to speed up the release. The policy has cost Xbox one of the biggest games of the year, and in turn served PlayStation a huge console exclusive on a silver platter. Is Series S holding back Xbox? Um, was it a mistake to release an underpowered console? Is it time for Xbox to drop the Series S and this restrictive policy altogether? Um, good question. I, I don't know. I mean, there's competing concerns. You, oh, sorry, George. Goes. There's competing concerns. You have the Series S because you want to make the console affordable for people. And, you know, I understand, it was back to an earlier question about Phil Spencer and, and components. It's expensive to make the console state of the art. Um, I really always thought that every game would be designed to the lowest common denominator. And so I didn't understand the difference in the two consoles, like exactly what was missing. Like I know hard drive and stuff, but but what, what exactly was missing from the, and, and no uh, disk drive, what was missing from this S that, that is in the X. And apparently you finally got a developer who designed to the higher standard. Uh, I didn't even know that was a thing. So apparently, you know, you finally got a developer designed to a higher spec, which is really good for gamers because they're getting a beautiful game. And we've always known PS5 was a higher spec. Um, but yeah, uh, Microsoft probably shouldn't have signed a contract that said it, it, that it had to run on both. And I don't know what they're going to do. You know, having to dumb down a game that's the best game of all time, by definition, it's not going to be as good. Um, I don't, you know, I can't say that everybody likes co-op play, but I do, you know, especially when I suck at a game and you, you need help to get through it. Um, you know, Shane was telling me about, you know, Elden Ring, you can actually call a helper to help you, you know, to get you out of a jam. I mean, that's cool. Um, I, you know, I, I was a big Left 4 Dead player and I was like the worst guy on the field. But what I did was flank the best guy on the field and I would shoot anything that I could that came near him to keep him alive. And he was so good, he shot everything. They were going after him, not me, because I sucked. And so I, we always won, it was really fun. Um, so, you know, again, that's the beauty of co-op is that you can rely on different skills. So I think that's a big loss. I haven't played Baldur's Gate yet, but I think it's a big loss that they don't have it. Um, they won't drop the Series S. I think they want to introduce people to Xbox gameplay. Um, they, I don't know the answer to this, but I suspect that Baldur's Gate will work on Game Pass. Um, and so they probably can let Series S players play it on Game Pass. You know, play the the full full blown version, but I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, I, I I think they won't sign contracts like this again. Um, and there aren't you wouldn't have noticed if it was for like Immortals or whatever. It was for some game that you don't care about. Um, you would notice if it's for the best game of all time. So yes, it's a mistake uh, to have different specs and sign contracts that limit your ability to sell software. Yes, it's a console exclusive for PS5. The fact is that how big is Baldur's Gate? 15 million units, you know, 20. It's not going to sell very many PS5s. It's going to sell two, three million. 
Um, and so it really doesn't matter in the scheme of things for the console guys, but it's a big black eye for Microsoft. Microsoft thinks by having the policy that it's got to work on both, that developers will be scared into dumbing the game down so it works on the dumber console. And they ran into a developer who said, Goff, we're going to make the best game we can make. And they developed to a higher standard. That's unusual. That's ballsy of a developer. Um, they're, they are leaving sales on the table. And Microsoft's going to have to rethink that policy. I mean, I think Microsoft would be absolutely fine if they said, go ahead and design to a higher standard and we'll tough it out. And what Microsoft probably should do is give people a credit and let them trade in their S for an X and give them some kind of a modest you know, cost to, to upgrade. But they blew it, they blew it out of a desire to make the console more affordable. And you know, again, people didn't have 500 bucks laying around. 500 bucks is a lot of money for a console. Um, it's hard. You know, not, I mean, I think 300 bucks is a lot of money for a console. You know, and especially if you don't make, if you make 30,000 or 50,000 a year, 500 bucks. 1% of your pay, it's a lot for a, a hardware device. I remember uh, I got my first bonus in my first job that paid a bonus. And I remember that I got a $1,000 bonus. And I was making $33,000 a year at the time. And my boss apologized because the bonus was so small. And I said, are you kidding me? That's like a new Sony TV. And that was the first Sony TV I ever had. I'd always had like Hitachi TVs. You know, I always had these crappy little Gold Star Korean or crappy Japanese TVs. And Sony, which is also Japanese, was like the gold standard. And I'm like, I am getting my first Sony TV. And I remember because my after tax amount was like 750 and my Sony TV was like 789. And I was just like, this is so cool. You know, I got a Sony TV. So I've always thought about, you know, a thousand bucks buys you a brand new bitchin' TV. And so to make, you know, to spend 500 on a console, God, you gotta earn like near a thousand bucks after taxes. It's a lot. So I, I get it. Microsoft is trying to, you know, again, the Series S isn't that much more affordable, but it's more affordable. You know, so it's not half price, but it should be. If, if this is the, if this is the uh, if, you know, impact, they should cut the price of the S to half price and, and sell more and tell people you're not gonna get every game, but you know, it'll still be good. Yeah, I mean, Microsoft's long-term vision is that consoles are going away. And their long-term vision is they want you to identify with the Xbox brand, sign up for Xbox Game Pass, and play all your games, whether you do it on your Xbox or your TV or PC, but play all your games on Game Pass. And, you know, they went from selling Office, Microsoft Office and Windows, uh, from, you know, used to be about 400 bucks every time you bought a PC, to charging for Office 365 100 bucks a year. Well, 100 is better than 400. Now, 100 a year, if you got a new PC every five years or longer, you would do the $400 per PC. If you got a new PC every three years, which is what most people were doing, then the, the $100 a year was a much better deal. So they convinced a whole lot of us who got a new PC every three years to pay 100 bucks a year. Now, PCs don't get that much better. And I'm not talking about gaming PCs. I'm talking about work PCs. You can easily have a PC for four or five years. I just got a new work PC in 2023, and my old work PC was 2019, exactly four years. So Microsoft's dead even. My home PC, five years old. And I, and I need to upgrade it, but I hardly ever use it. But if I ever decide I'm gonna play a game on it, I'm buying a new one. But Microsoft's getting 100 bucks a year in perpetuity. And what they correctly assessed was the proliferation of PCs. My kids each have one, my wife has one, I have two. 500 bucks in my household per year to, to uh, Microsoft. So they're trying to switch console software sales to random 70 bucks here and there into 15 bucks a month of perpetuity. And they're, they're brilliant about it. And you're gonna get a ton of content for that and you're gonna do it. So the Xbox Series S is the gateway drug to get you to try Game Pass. 
and they're going to conv convert all of us to monthly subscribers and they're going to make a lot more money in the long run. So, you know, I, I know that's why they did it and they want to make consoles affordable. I'm surprised that they haven't been cutting price on consoles. Um, thank you, Patreon patrons. Thank you, YouTube subscribers, for supporting Shane in his quest to keep the Sifted site alive. This is important. Um, thank you if you have linked your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch Prime account. Shane is getting paid for that, so thank you. You are supporting the site. Um, if you are watching this a week late, that's because you didn't do any of those things. Uh, you can still link your Twitch Prime account to your Amazon Prime account. But you're required to follow me on the formerly, site formerly known as Twitter, um, at Michael Pactor.